All right, so I'm a car guy uh, on YouTube, so of course I've got to make the obligatory uh, oil change video, of course, right? Because no one in their right mind would be on YouTube and not do an oil change video. So I'm going to try to go through this. I'm not even sure if I'm going to publish it. Maybe it'll just be a quick video. Maybe just be. Maybe you'll get some information from this you didn't get from anywhere else. But um, I've changed the oil. This uh, 2012 Porsche Cayman S. Uh, about. I'd say this is probably the fourth, fifth time that I've changed the oil. Uh, now I haven't changed oil in quite a while. I think it's been a, a little over a year since I changed oil in this car. I don't drive it a lot, just on the weekends. I've probably put maybe two to 3,000 miles this year on the car, so it hasn't really been an issue to change the oil since I think last November of 2021. And it's now December of 2022. Uh, it's actually the last day of the year. So. The one thing that's changed since I changed, uh, well, the one thing that the car has changed since I've done my oil change was the car has been lowered. So the car is pretty low. It's about a 1.3 or 1.4 inch drop. And I learned while trying to do work on the car last time that I can't really fit my jack under it anymore. So what I had to do is I made these little makeshift ramps, these little wooden ramps. And there's some guides on YouTube on how to do this. Uh, I didn't really have good tools, so it didn't come out as the way that I thought. But uh, I used those ramps to get the car high enough to, uh, to put a hydraulic jack underneath. So uh, that was a learning experience. But um, I use a bunch of different tools. Some people may have different ways of doing this. Um, I do it a particular way and use a particular set of oil. Uh, and tools if you find anything that's uh, useful I didn't mention in this video just uh, feel free to mention it in the comments below I'm sure everyone has got their tricks on how to do this uh, for this car or other types of models so let me go over the parts list I'll try to put a detailed list of parts overlay over this video but um, I'm, I'm not using those uh, wooden ramps anymore because they weren't very effective uh, they worked in a pinch, but uh, but I decided just to go ahead and spend the money, and I got these uh, race ramps here. So these race ramps, I think they're it's about a seven degree lift, uh, or a seven degree uh, is the angle of these ramps, and I think they're three inch, so the three inch tall, so they fit under the car, and with the seven degree lift, it's it's good for even like really low cars, maybe not slammed cars, but. Uh, as low as I've got my car, you know, with like one to three inch uh, clearance, it works pretty well. So I've got four of them, and the two in the back have got these little bump stops at the bottom. So you back it up, and then the, of course, when you reach those little, the rear tires reach those bump stops, uh, you know, you can feel that um, when the car's rolling back. So I uh, haven't used these. I've used, I used them once just to see if they, I had the clearance, uh, months ago, like six, seven months ago, and they worked fine. But this is the first time I've actually used them to do maintenance on the car. So, but anyway, let's uh, let's go over the parts. So this is no in particular order here. Um, I'm using the uh, pure oil. Uh, this is a special type of motor oil that is, I think it's a mixture between a group four and a group five pure synthetic. I'm using this uh, pure oil brand motor oil. It's a uh, synthetic and it's 10W40, which normally the specs for this uh, 2012 Porsche Cayman S is a uh, 0W40, uh, but you can also use the 10W40 if you're using oil for just a track car or something and it's a really hot day, you may want to use as you know 10W50 or 0W50. Uh, don't take my word on it, just go do your research. If you decide to track your car, just find out what motor oil is best for you. So this motor oil was recommended by a, uh, a tuner in Ontario, California named Busy Moto. Uh, he's done lots of uh, different uh, Honda builds and Porsche builds and everything and he promotes this oil. Um, I did the research and this uh, oil has a lot of zinc in it. It's got more zinc than a, a lot of different oils uh, for the money and it also it's very resilient uh, when the temperature is hot. So when the engine gets really hot, 
and the oil gets really hot, it stays resilient um, even at the hottest temperatures. So peace of mind, you know, it, it costs it costs more than regular oil. It's it's averaged about twice as much as regular oil, uh, motor oil, synthetic oil. So it's pricey, uh, but since I don't take my car to to the dealership to do the oil change, I figured that I save a little money on that, so why not splurge on better motor oil? For the rest of the parts list, um, I've got these lift bars um, because it allows me to lift the Porsche easier. Uh, I may show you that later in the video, I'm not sure, but basically each bar goes under each side of the Cayman. Uh, it fits underneath the, um, the mounting points on the left and right side of the car, front and back, and you can use one jack to lift one side of the car. You do that, put your jack stands under, and you're good to go. Um, so it's, it's a really easy way to lift uh, one whole side of the car. Um, instead of jacking it up, you know, four different points and trying to put your jack stand underneath uh, uh, each each of the corners. Um, I've got my oil container here, my oil pan. Uh, it's pretty good on Amazon. It, it, it was okay. I, I find this oil pan is, I can't tell you what brand it is. Um, uh, seal, I'm not sure if it's a uh, seal best or what. What is this? Yeah, well, the sticker on the other side. It, it, it's okay, but the thing I found about these oil pans uh, is that they, the seals on the plastic seals eventually fail. Like where the, see the seal at the, at the, at the bottom, um, where the plastic, I guess, is molded together, melted together. For some reason, eventually, and I don't know why they make them this, I mean, I'd pay more money for a better pan and, Somebody mentioned in the comments of an oil pan you use which has never failed after like a half a dozen or a dozen times of use. I would really be interested, but um, but this is pretty easy to to uh, use. Uh, this there's a little grate under there, so you open that top and and uh, put the oil in, but uh, let the oil drain into there. And it's easy to pour out. It's just, I've noticed that the seals aren't perfect, so they leak a little bit. So I've found out the hard way, you know, put it on the floor in the, my closet. And it's like, oh, well, there's some oil there. So I've had to put it in a plastic bag just in case some oil leaks out of the seam somehow. Uh, really disappointing, but, you know, live and learn. I guess these things aren't meant to last forever. You know, it, 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 you know, it was about $50. I expected a little bit more for $50. Maybe I bought the wrong one, or maybe just I got a bad one. Listing, I've got two LED work lights here I put underneath the car. Uh, some people have the mounted lights that they can wear on their head. That would probably be more convenient. But I haven't really looked into those, so I just use these standard LED uh, lights here uh, in a pinch. So I've got your paper towels. I've got your shop gloves. I've got a torque wrench. That's to torque down the oil drainage bolt and the oil filter when you replace it. Uh, garbage bags uh, to put the spent oil uh, in. Oh, yeah, the oil, um, this car uses about eight quarts of oil. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less, uh, depending on I guess what model of Cayman that you drive. I have a 3.4 liter, so this is about, I don't know if it makes a difference between this and the 2.7, but it's uh, it's about eight quarts of oil. I think the manual says it's a little over eight quarts of oil, but I found eight quarts of oil is perfect, usually. On, I've got my uh, oil filter, the oil funnel, and some shop rags or cheap microfiber rags. I've got the, uh, hydraulic jack. I got four jack stands here. I've got a, uh, uh, some people use a creeper. Um, I'm not that fancy yet. Maybe in a couple of years I'll get a nice creeper, but I just use this cardboard box and that's in case the shop, you know, the garage floor is dirty or, uh, or just to pick up some uh, oil if it drips out from the uh, oil pan. So if any oil drops, drips down from the car, it will fall on that first. All right, got some other parts. Um, I might use these or I might not, but these are kind of these uh, uh, jack spacers that they're supposed to fit in these uh, these little notches here to fit under the Cayman mounting points, that part right there. So I might use those. I might not need them. 
Uh, like I said, the same kind of mount notches are on these lift bars, so I may not need them. But I'll use that. Uh, it, we've also got the a wrench. She only need a wrench to take the oil filter and the the drainage bolt out. Uh, you also for the stock OEM drainage bolt, uh, you'll need an eight millimeter hex adapter. So I've got one of those. And then to remove the oil filter, you'll need an extension. So that will reach up there because the oil filter is not near the bottom. It's actually tucked away next to the engine, kind of tucked away between the engine. Uh, so you'll need one of those to get to it. All right, and I got a couple of parts here to replace the oil filter so we can get down there. I got this from Pelican Parts. This is just a, a male or mile oil filter. That's the model number. And this might help you. Some more information. You can find this on Pelican Parts. If you put your car in the search engine and look up the oil filter, it'll t give you the right part number. That won't focus for some reason. All right. Anyway. And I've got these other parts here. Here is a new drainage bolt. Currently I'm using a magnetic drainage bolt. I thought it'd be useful to help me pick up any metal shards if they happen to pop off the, you know, of the, uh, uh, you know, in, in the internals of the engine, then maybe I can find an easy way to collect some of those things in case I'm having a problem. If I'm driving the car hard and it's Somehow some metal shavings are coming loose. It'll collect there uh, down where the magnetic drainage bolt. I've got a magnetic drainage bulb on my RSX. Um, honestly, I think if you your car is susceptible to that, it's probably more useful. I just did it as peace of mind to like, oh, well, I, I can easily see if there's metal here if I've got a magnetic drainage bolt. So it's just kind of a gee whiz kind of thing I've got. But I think I'm going back to the OEM drainage bolt. This is the uh, part number here. And then I've got some spacers. Is the part number for that and another interesting thing that I learned over the years I went to the store I needed an oil filter cap or an adapter or oil fil filter adapter to remove the oil filter but I think I don't know how large this one is it's um I don't know how many maybe it's like 72 millimeters or 73 millimeters but when I went to the store I got one that was like 71 or 74, no, I think this is like a 72, and then the one in the store was a 74 millimeter or something like that. Well, it wasn't tight enough. I needed one that was exactly the same size. So if you look at the part number here, that's the part number. 00072192040. So this is uh, made by uh, Hazit. It's a 2169, it's the model number. But I got this off Pelican Parts too. Pelican Parts had the exact fitting, the exact size that I needed to remove the oil filter. So that's really useful. So just keep in mind if, you, if you're having trouble removing the oil filter uh, using something, uh, a store-bought adapter, double check on how large it is. It may not be the exact size and you may need to get one that's exactly the size of the, the uh, 987's oil filter. A couple more things to mention here. Um, I've got the iCarsoft multi-system car diagnostic tool. It's a PORV 2.0, um, and this helps me reset the reminder in the computer that I performed an oil change. Without this, the car will continuously annoy you uh, with messages that you need to have your car serviced. So this just resets the service interval inside the computer. I uh, also got some water. So, you know, you if you drink coffee or whatever, you, you if you know me from my previous videos, I don't drink coffee. So, uh, you can, you know, bring something to drink because you're waiting, you're probably going to be waiting a while for the oil to drain. Uh, another tip is that I drive the car for a few minutes, get the oil a little warm uh, up to operating temperature uh, before I change the oil that way the oil will drip and come out a little bit faster. So that's a little 
tip I'm sure some of you already know, but if you have been doing this for the first time, just keep in mind, just, you know, drive the car for a few minutes, get it warmed up uh, before you uh, change the oil. It'll make it, uh, the oil drain a lot faster. Uh, and I also got a chair because, you know, my garage doesn't have any seating arrangements. So I've got a little chair there to fold out chair uh, to sit and wait for the oil to drain. So, um, this one is bought from Harbor Freight. This one I got off of Amazon. I really like these. I don't know if they make these anymore, but they're uh, Arcan floor jacks. Very good quality. They're aluminum, so they're lightweight and they're very strong. I've used these things dozens of times uh, doing work on my RSX and, and the Cayman too, so they work really well. Got the car on the race ramps. First time I've used these race ramps, all four of them. So it's actually doing a job. And then I've got my lift bar there on the jack. And these fit right under the mounting points. And you lift the car up. So I think this is gonna work out. I'm glad it wasn't. Uh, didn't have any clearance issues, but those race ramps really come in a pinch. If you have a dropped Cayman, I highly recommend you use those, uh, especially in conjunction with the race ramps. Um, so when you're changing the oil in the Cayman, it's best if the if the oil if the car is level when you're changing the oil. Some people that have a normal uh, drop on their Cayman, an OEM drop, they'll just kind of slide under the car and change the oil that way. Uh, you can do that. I think it's it's kind of difficult, more difficult. Um, but that does the car level and you can change the oil and the oil comes out of the oil pan uniformly. So I think that all works out. But this is another way of doing it. So this is if you don't have a f two or four, four post lift. This is a, uh, a really easy, convenient way to uh, lift the car up. Lifted it up a little bit. As you see, those little divots fit right into the mounting holes on the underside of the Cayman. That works out. It takes a little while to line them up. You have to line them up and kind of wiggle the bar around while you lift the jack up a little bit. All right, that's what it should look like using the lift bar on one side. I'll just repeat the process for the other side. Okay. Got under the car here with the lift bars on four jack stands. Very important use jack stands for safety. And you know, my sweet like aftermarket exhaust there with black tips and that cross pipe. Uh, yeah, so still got the stock sway bars and all that. That's probably gonna be changed pretty soon. Getting even closer here to underneath the car. Got my oil pan is right there, kind of right under the engine. About that's about where it is under the car is the oil pan and there is your oil plug I have an aftermarket plug here of course I uh, hope I can get this thing off because it looked like it started to strip a little bit so cross your fingers let's hope that I can get that out today and uh, while I'm back here you can see my fab speed headers here pretty cool look really sweet and there's those on the other side oh here is the oil filter so here's the oil pan and just if you're to the left if you're sitting in the driver's position to the left of the oil pan is the oil filter it's that little black casing right there so you can't use just like a regular wrench you're gonna have to need an extender to reach up through that cavity there and that uh, that's where you remove the oil filter. I continue recording. Uh, I, I wish I could give you every part of the video of doing the actual job. I would suggest you look up D-Ray, D-W-R-A-Y. He's a lot more comprehensive 
photos of him doing stuff and making mistakes like we all do. But uh, yeah, there we go. Made a big mess. It came out a lot more forcibly than I thought. But hey, that's why I have that cardboard box, right? So, just gotta wait. Uh, you know, if, if I was really resourceful, I could probably uh, slide under the other side and remove the oil filter. But I like having the the peace of mind of, of this, this thing right here underneath the oil filter just in case I dr drop any oil. It's not on my face or my shirt. <laughs> it ends up in the pan where it belongs. The adventure of the oil change. Got my oil filter out. When you buy this oil filter, by the way, it also comes with this O-ring. So you don't have to worry about getting that uh, separately. There's my adapter. Here is the old drainage plug I had, the magnetic one. Um, I'll just hold on to that as a spare plug in case I need to use it, but it looked like whoever torqued it before didn't really torque it a little too much. I think when I had to remove it once, I almost stripped it. I'm not sure what kind of metal that is, but it's pretty malleable for what it's supposed to do. So, I don't know, this was 40 bucks. Maybe I don't recommend you. <laughs> you just get use the OEM one. I think this is useful. This magnetic drainage plug is useful if you're if you're tracking your car a lot, you want to make sure that you pick up all the shavings at the bottom of the oil pan in case you have bore scoring or something like that. So, I don't know, maybe it's a fairly good peace of mind or it helps you identify uh, metal shavings in your oil, uh, gives you a head up, uh, a heads up, uh, kind of a warning before anything really bad happens. But I'm just going, I don't track my car that often, so I'm going to the OEM bolt. I got the OEM bolt right there. Uh, still waiting on this. This has been a while. It's like 15 minutes later. It's still running. I think it takes about 30 minutes to be honest. Uh, and the oil was warm. So I don't know. Like, But anyway, there's the, uh, there's the stock drainage bolt. I got the washer on there already. That's cool. And uh, I've already got my tool a torque uh, wrench set up with the hex adapter ready to bolt that in once the oil drains uh, if I'll mention it again that's an eight millimeter hex adapter and this torque wrench I'm torquing it to 37 foot pounds is what the OEM oil drainage bolt should be uh, tightened to 37 foot pounds I think that's like 50 newton meters, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken. All right, I got a drip going here, so I'm going to plug that with the OEM drainage plug. I'm going to finish that with a torque wrench. I'm not going to just tighten it by hand. All right, I'm going to clean around the drainage plug. If I was really good about cleaning this, I'd have a toothbrush or something. But I'm not that crazy. I'm, I'm almost that crazy, but not that crazy. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, but I will tighten it with a torque wrench. All right, let's see here. Kingdom for a camera stand because this is very difficult to do. And that's basically and this is tightened to 37 newton meters. I'm gonna get a better hand on this so I don't strip this. So I'm going to stop the video, but 37. Uh, 37 foot-pounds or 50 newton meters is where you tighten this OEM drainage bolt. All right, got a tight squeeze here, but there's the old drainage bolt on there, all nifty. And uh, got that put in. It's hard to take the adapter out. I wonder if other people have that problem taking that once you tighten it, it's like almost impossible getting the 
hex adapter loose. Um, anyway, there is the Yep, anyway, there is the that black casing there. That part right there. That is the oil filter. It's just to the left of the engine if you're facing forward in the car. And or left of the oil pan. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my wrench and extender and I'm gonna loosen the oil filter. This is what the thing looks like when you get it all attached. The extender here with the oil filter adapter there. And I don't know if I can get this on camera. But, uh, and it's usually easier if you put the wrench to the right because you've got this guard here to the left. So I usually, there we go. So it fits right up in there. And then you just start turning counterclockwise to take the oil filter. It's it's not as tight as the oil drainage plug. And when I've, I'm going to put the new one in, I don't know if I can film that, but when I put the new one in, that's going to be torqued when you tighten the uh, oil filter, this uh, oil filter, uh, I don't know, oil, oil filter cap or uh, container. I'll show you where the the o-ring goes. The o-ring is pretty important, so I'll show you where that goes uh, in the next video. But uh, let's see what I can capture here on film. Right, I've almost got it off now, but this uh, this wrench and extender it barely clears that header there with a handle when I'm turning counterclockwise, and on this side it just wouldn't work. So you know you could probably use a longer extender. I'm not sure how long that extender is. It's four four inch or five inch or six inch. I'm not sure. So maybe you can use a longer one. It'll help you clear uh, your wrench to clear the underside of the chassis here under the car. Uh, but I'm going to take this out. It's going to be messy and I don't have a, a phone stand, anything to prop the phone up. So I'll show you uh, next uh, when I get it taken out, what it looks like and the O-ring and all that stuff. I uh, made another mess. <laughs> so I just want to remind everybody that get plenty of towels paper towels, get plenty of shop rags, uh, you're going to make a mess. And also other tools like brake cleaner, in case you need to clean up some mess and make an oil spill or something, something to clean up the oil if you spill it somewhere. And, um, I've got some, I just don't have it out in the garage here, but um, some brake cleaner would be good to clean up some oil. I'm sure there's something else that might be better. But there is the, uh, there's the old oil filter. Uh, and it took me a while actually that adapter got stuck on this so I needed a screwdriver to pry it loose so so just having like a toolkit like I have over there a toolkit is comes in handy in case something goes wrong you need to um, to get something loose I use pliers to take this off the oil drainage plug that got stuck so I needed a set of pliers, and pliers are going to be useful too when I take the uh, O-ring off of the old uh, oil filter container. I'm not sure what this is. Uh, uh, it's like an oil filter container. I, I can't remember the exact name, so I apologize. But that was the bottom of what you saw before. Um, so the little O-ring is right there. This thing is threaded, so if you see from the very bottom, the O-ring actually goes on the, I'm not sure, I think it goes on like the second one. So the bottom thread is from the bottom here. And then the next one up, that's where the O-ring goes. Um, put it there. I've done that three or four times. I've never had a problem with it. That seems to be where it goes. So that it's a new O-ring. I recommend it. They, usually they recommend that you replace the um some some say online that you should get a new um, oil drainage plug uh, every time you change the oil. Uh, I, I personally don't do that every time, but this time I did because I wanted to swap out from the old magnetic one I had to the OEM, go back to the OEM one. 
Uh, but I can see a good argument of changing one. I mean, they're they're I don't know they're fifteen to twenty dollars a piece. I think so. You know, if you own a Porsche, maybe that's not too expensive to get one while you're at it, getting an oil change. Um, uh, but yeah, so there's the old, old oil filter. I'll dispose of that properly, get that recycled along with the oil. And, uh, and there's the cap, so I'm going to take this thing off and put a new one on. show you something more about the oil filter. There's a little notch there in the center. Uh, you can see that in the middle of this container and that fits this thing can go either one way or the other I've read online I think it doesn't really matter which way you put it so you one side goes down in there and that's not usually how I I put it in the car I actually put the filter in first and that part just there's this a similar notch on the other side um, on the oil filter uh, cavity I don't know what you call it like a oil filter plate so that sticks up there and it it's actually just fits on there you can just you know push push it this on by hand and it attaches to the little nozzle on the oil filter adapter and then the other side fits onto that little notch down there and you just screw this on by hand after you get the filter on there you screw this on by hand until it gets hand tight and then you torque it to 20, I'm sorry, 18 foot-pounds. I'm not sure how many uh, Newton meters that is. Uh, you can use the internet to find out. All right, I got the new O-ring on. I believe that's where it goes. There's a little space, larger space in the threads, if you can see there, right above that. Uh, I believe it goes, the O-ring goes right below that larger thread area there. That's how I had the old other one on. I think that's how I put all my O-rings on. Um, I noticed it actually will fit in the notch above it. So let me know if your comments, if I'm an idiot, if I'm totally doing it wrong. The O-ring is lower than it should be. But I uh, haven't had any problems, so I guess I'll keep doing it this way. All right, let's see if we can do this with a phone. See, so easy I can do it with one hand. All right, let's see here. I'll just There we go. It might be a little hard to push in, but it may get a little resistance, but if you just keep twisting and pushing in, you get it in. See? So you can just push it in by hand, and usually I push while I'm twisting, and it goes right in. You don't doesn't matter if you twist left or right, uh, counterclockwise or clockwise, just as long as it, but if you keep, if you, if you don't notice it, uh, seat in, you just keep pushing and twisting until you get it seat in, but I got it in there, so it's not going anywhere, and you want to put the cap back on, so this container here, move it up here, and like I said, you can twist this on by hand until it gets hand tight and then use the torque wrench to torque to 18 foot pounds alright let's see I can probably yeah that will yeah like that I was explaining earlier it's good to have a, a longer extension because this thing is like an inch or two too small but I think I managed last time. See if you notice, I only have a few inches to turn the torque wrench left to right. So I'll just get one longer than that. Like I said, I think that's a four to six inch. Maybe get a six to eight inch or something like that. Uh, that would be better, but I need to torque this. So, so I'm gonna put the phone down here and go ahead and torque this to 18 foot pounds. And uh, I'll be back. All right, luckily I had an extender extension to the extension so that should make it a lot easier for me to to get up there it should be just the amount of length that I need to get up there and torque this oil filter cap I tightened my oil filter and you want to double check for sanity's sake that you make sure that you put in the 
oil drainage plug and not that not only if you hand tighten it make sure that you remember hey I need to go back and torque that oil drainage plug so I torque the oil drainage plug I torque the oil filter so you want to double check all that stuff before you do the next step which is putting more oil in because if you didn't do that last step and you just left the drainage plug off you're going to have a big 8 quart mess after all this is done so this is the oil that is the coolant so you want to undo this cap Porsche creates like a nifty little uh, reservoir here in case you spill anything it falls down there which is really neat because you're putting oil inside your cabin which is really weird but that's mid-engine life right <laughs> so let's uh, let's put some oil in here you put your I put a filter in there probably don't really need a filter I mean I'm not a filter a funnel but uh, I'm gonna see if I can uh, put a funnel in there anyway just for peace of mind and uh, as you notice I put like a garbage bag here you can put you know sometimes I have something down here to cover up the uh, this lid here but as long as you're careful you should be all right I could cut this bag up and be super careful about where it goes but it's all right that should be good enough all right uh, I took the car around the block and we're gonna access the menu here I got a push in on the left lower stalk two times and I get an oil pops right up I'm gonna tap that it says oil measurement 25 seconds all right resuming here let's see what our oil looks like eight quarts ooh okay that's not an uh, strange at all so I've got a little bit extra oil I've got another uh, three-fourths of a quart so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the car and I'm going to add just a little bit of oil like I said it's like it's it's like a third a fourth or a third just a little bit um, you can measure it but I just kind of play it by ear just like okay well let's just put a little bit in there I you know as much as I think is a third or a fourth and then we'll measure again doesn't have to be exact like I say another note about this cap here usually I like to see the cap it's the logo straight but if you're putting the cap back on and you tighten it and it's like that you haven't tightened it enough now it may not matter maybe it matters for the oil pressure I'm not sure but make sure when you put the cap back on when it stops, you want to turn it a little bit more, tighten it a little bit more. Okay, and then you'll feel feel it catch. And that's the way the oil cap should go on. All right, we're gonna put a little bit of oil in. It was like a third, maybe. Let's see what, a third of a quart. Let's see what happens. It sounds a little louder because I have the hatch open, so. It's not that loud, folks. Don't worry. Oh, let's see. Yeah, it'll let me do it. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll resume. <laughs> let's see what it says after a third of a quart. All right, perfect. Just like I said, so as you noticed, it moved up two notches. So you could put a, a I could have put a quarter in. It might have been a little lower, but that's perfect. So. Uh, next, I guess I'll show you how to reset the computer. I'm not sure how that's going to go because um, my cable's really bad and I have to hold on to it with one hand and then work the device with the other hand. So let's see what we can do. Here's this car soft device. Open it up. One pouch has the cable in it. Like I said, this cable's kind of crappy. So I'm sure I can get another one and it would be easier, but this is the device. And then it comes with instructions. Uh, not sure what that's for, but uh, it runs off of the power of the OBD2 port, so you don't have to connect it to external power or anything like that. Um, ignition has to be on. Uh, you don't have to start the car; the car doesn't have to be running. But I think I think the ignition has to be on. So let me look over this again. I always forget because I only do this every six months to a year. So let me uh, let me check on this and uh, see exactly how to do it. 
pardon the dirty floor. So dirty being a Porsche. What am I, what was I thinking? All right, as you noticed, if you watch my other videos, I got the LED light installed. It usually doesn't look that white. All right, so I don't think you can see it, but there is the OBD2 ports. There's the dead pedal. There's the clutch. Haha, <laughs> clutch, yeah. And there we have the uh, OBD2 port. So you just hook that wire here into there, and then the device should automatically boot. And let me see if I can do that without trying to hold. Like I said, this cable's pretty bad, and before I had to hold the cable in place for it to work. So, but I wanted to show you where that port was, in case you wanted to know. So, I'm going to move this thing here on diagnostics, upper left corner. And it sees that it's a Porsche. Press enter right here. And... I'm going to muddle through this. I read the instructions, but okay. So I guess it... Let me go back. And do this another way. Uh, let's see. Let's do service. Okay. Let's try it this way. So I went to service, which is the second one on the top. Maybe this is what I should be doing. Oil reset is on the upper left corner. Enter. It's Porsche. Virgin list is this, is only one option. Press enter. And let's see. It's probably going to ask me. Okay, it says manual select smart scan. I could do smart scan. Maybe it'll give me a different option. Let me let me try that again. Oh, turn the ignition on. All right, so it asked me to turn the ignition on. I thought ignition was on, but the key was just in the ignition. All right, it, I think I press OK F2 over here. Okay, here we go. Okay, it's asking me model year. So I have a 2009 to 2012, so I should do 2009. Even though I have a 2012, it's still the same. Generation is 987.2, so I'm going to do 2009. It says turn ignition on, which I just did. Alright, F2. Okay, <laughs> so now it's asking me to enter the current date. Uh, well, that's easy. Uh, this is going to take a while, so I'm just going to go ahead and enter the date here. Pause. Enter the current date as instructions show there at the top. I'm going to finish by pressing F2. Okay, now it's asking me what region. Uh, the, I have the top region, so I'm going to select USA. Enter. And it's asking me kilometers or miles. This is US, so we go by miles here. All right, it says application complete, and then I heard a little ticking noise behind the uh, instrument cluster, and the you heard the beep there. So I think I'm done. Um, a little bit different than I like I said, I, I seem to figure it out if I muddle through it. Um, but I went down the wrong road the first time. But I hope that helps someone that's following this thing that you know don't have to take the wrong roads like I did. Um, I believe that's how you do it. So to exit, I guess it says F2 OK. So to back out, I can just press back. I can just go back and just go all the way out of it. I guess you don't have to do that. You could probably unhook the device at this point. But that's the starting screen. All right. Well, I hope that helps. Uh, I'm not sure I might shoot a post uh, clip after this. If not, um, I hope that helps. Uh, like I said, if you see anything uh, i'll try to make corrections down below i'm sure i'm gonna edit myself and post and uh, i said some stupid things i'm sure and i'll probably correct those but um if you have any questions uh, i'll try to help like i said there's other people really useful people like uh, dray d-w-r-a-y he does a shot a little bit better video than i did about exactly how to do each thing um but uh, I don't think he actually showed the diagnostic, or maybe he had a different one.
So uh, that's the thing that I always uh, was afraid to do because I didn't want to mess anything up, but I think I did it correctly. All right, um, I guess I'll see you folks next time. Oh, by the way, I will have a complete breakdown of the RSX coming soon. So for you guys that are out there and you, you maybe you want to buy a Porsche, you're, in, you're here for the Honda, but you want a Porsche, <laughs> just stay tuned. Um, hopefully in the next month or two, I'll be creating a, uh, uh, a very detailed uh, overview of the RSX, just like I did for the Cayman. All right. That's it. I guess I'll see you folks next time. Later.